I solemnly swear on the Bible. I solemnly swear on the Bible. Guess who's back with more controversy? This is all of her most famous controversies throughout the years, in order, in detail. Let's explore. Her first major controversy that I could find was her feud with Tyra Banks. Here's what allegedly went on between them. Banks felt that once she got to Paris, Campbell tried everything in her power to stop her from excelling. The two sat down and revisited their tattered history on Banks' talk show in 2005. Tyra Banks, supermodel Naomi Campbell, now on Tyra. Right when I was about to walk out, and you said something, and it's so funny because it was so surreal at the time when you said it, I didn't think that you could actually say something like that. What did I say? You said uh, something like, you'll never be me, don't ever think that you'll be me, and something I like that. I said that? Yes. I can't think, that's something... I'm not that, I'm very Specific. much in the, yeah, I'm very much, I know the person that I am, mm -hmm. and I'm not someone to go and give myself away and say that to anybody. I've never said that in my life. Wait a minute, don't, don't, no, 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 don't compare, they don't shorten your compare dress. They would yourself never, to me, they would ever. Never make you you are not on my level, Nicole. Longer. You never will be on my level. Do not compare yourself. You know, I can actually imagine that she did say that, but only they will ever know. In the end, she apologized and then faced Tyra on the runway once more in a duel where they imitated each other's walks. Okay, guys, there's a twist. The twist is I have to work the runway like Naomi walks. And I she has to work the runway like, like I Tyra walks. put me on the evening news because I forgot what I called her. Wagon, do you remember? An ugly bitch with a face. An ugly bitch with a face, with the head of an alien. <laughs> In November of 2020, Campbell posted an article to her Instagram stories that hinted that Tyra was a secret mean girl in the whole falling out. I feel with this feud, it is but a footnote in Naomi's career and a definitive era in Tyra's. I need not say more on that. This next controversy was a runway marvel. Although not a mistake on her own part, even Naomi can fall on the runway. In a 1993 Vivian Westwood show, her rubber tights got caught and she fell down. It was a major moment in her career and gained a lot of attention in the press. May Vivian Westwood rest in peace. She passed away on December 29, 2022. Campbell paid homage to her and her legacy in an Instagram post with a series of photos including one of the famed incident. Together, her and Naomi made some indelibly memorable iconography. The shoes she wore have been a constant reference in fashion and pop culture ever since. Naomi Campbell in those shoes. She sat down with Westwood herself to talk about the famed incident. Now, there's a trick yes. to walking in your Let shoe. me tell you, stop. The reason you fell is because you had these rubber ties. Yes! And, yes! Like, and your thighs caught together, and so you wiggled on the shoe, and you've only got to wiggle slightly, and you're over. <laughs> and and, 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 and then, then we gave you a stick. Yes! And you did not use the stick. You went down the catwalk with the stick like this instead, just to show <laughs> that you could <laughs> not fall. But this more lighthearted moment didn't dictate the course of the rest of her less playful falls in life. Throughout the 90s, her transgressions continued. Her entitled and abusive behavior at Elite Model Management Agency allegedly led to her being dropped by the founder, John Casablancas. Casablancas opened up about his time with Naomi when she was represented by the agency from 1987 to 1993 in a 2016 documentary titled Casablancas, The Man Who Loved Women, directed by Hubert Waraniki. The following is an excerpt from a Page Six article covering the doc and his experience with Campbell. He says of Naomi, Meanwhile, I had to continue dealing with the egos of my super divas and Naomi Campbell wasn't the least of them. Naomi is a spectacular woman, explosive, intelligent, and talented, but with an uncontrollable temperament. We had hundreds of fights. Casablancas claims that, quote, Naomi used to threaten us every day that she would leave. He continues, I took a decision that made history. 
Not only did I fire her, I also sent out a telegram to all our clients before she could turn around and say that she was the one who had left us. His letter read, Please be informed that we do not wish to represent Miss Naomi Campbell any longer. No amount of money or prestige could further justify the abuse that has been imposed on our staff and our clients. All those who have experienced this will understand. But, he also says, two years later, she was back with us. I must admit that I adore Naomi. Campbell's rep told Page Six that the depiction is, quote, inaccurate. Her rep continues, Naomi was never fired by Mr. Casablancas, but chose to leave of her own will during that time in New York. She was still with the elite in London and Paris. This was such a long time ago, Naomi has the fondest memories of working with Mr. Casablancas and considered him a friend. I should like to know something about gossip, some gossip about you and your and agency. No Tell me gossip. what happened. <laughs> I just left my agency and um, wanted to go somewhere else. And um, my, other, my ex agent, I'm not going to endorse anyone, got upset and said he fired me. But models can't be fired. We pay them to work for us. We're self employed and we own ourselves. So that was really a silly statement. But I don't really have anything bad to say about elite or anything. Um, I just wanted to change. What would the modeling industry be without little white lies and little white lines? Coke and couture go hand in hand, but this time it was a different type of chemical. According to Spanish newspaper La Provincia, a leaked police report on June 18, 1997 revealed that then 27-year-old Naomi Campbell OD'd on 20 antidepressants in Canary Islands. She'd been apparently drinking as well. Allegedly, a heated argument with then-boyfriend Spanish flamenco dancer Joaquin Cortez triggered the actions that led to her hospitalization. Hotel guests complained of loud noises coming from her room. Campbell's representative denied the report, stating, Contrary to the reports, Naomi Campbell was admitted to the hospital in Gran Canaria today suffering from an allergic reaction to antibiotics. Most recently, Naomi's been linked to Spanish flamenco dancer Joaquin Cortez. Minus reports in this Entertainment Tonight exclusive, Naomi comes to us to set the record straight. I've never had a problem with drugs. I wouldn't be coming to work today if I was in a drug, in a, in a drug overdose or in hospital. Naomi Campbell was back at work in Paris on the very same day headlines had her overdosing on drugs following a lover's quarrel with Spanish flamenco heartthrob Joaquin Cortez. There was no fighting, there was no row. On Sunday, this hospital in Spain's Canary Islands reported that the 27-year-old supermodel had been treated for an overdose of barbiturates. Cortez was spotted visiting her, and Sunday evening, Campbell left for Paris. I was taken an um, antibiotic, and I had taken a glass of champagne, which I shouldn't have done. And I think that's why it's part of the problem. The uh, combination didn't help me. I had to go to the hospital. Gossip reports claim that Campbell threatened to kill herself after seeing her boyfriend with another woman. Campbell denies the report, but admits they do have a difficult relationship. He doesn't speak English. I don't speak Spanish. It's impossible. We barely can hold a conversation as profit together. So it's very impos it's impossible for us to fight. He's worried now. You know, he's getting as much hassle as I'm getting, and he's performing right this minute as we speak. Here in the States, fashion insiders insist that Naomi leads a clean lifestyle, but is victimized by vicious rumors. Naomi is not a part of heroin chic. I think that people are always quick, especially in this industry, to make up stories and apply things that aren't necessarily true. I'm surprised that people care so much what I do, what I, who I want to go, who I'm seeing. It's just like, leave me alone. In September of 1998, Campbell was accused of punching personal assistant Gina Galanis and hitting her with a jewel-encrusted Blackberry at a hotel while in Toronto to film a movie. She later pled guilty and was released. However, it wasn't until 2007 that Campbell would serve community service. From the catwalk to the perp walk. She was assigned to community service. She served five days. She completed her service successfully. She reported every day on time.
She did a variety of duties, such as uh, sweeping the garage floor downstairs, uh, mopping and sweeping uh, the hallways uh, downstairs and upstairs, uh, cleaning the grout out of the walls, uh, locker room detail, cleaning the bathrooms. <laughs> She was on her hands and knees uh, at some point cleaning the walls and the floors on the second floor. Uh, she did scrub the toilets of the uh, bathroom, the female locker room upstairs. This was the first real spectacle surrounding Campbell's notorious temper. It's Campbell's punishment for hurling a cell phone at her maid, allegedly over a pair of jeans. Campbell is expected to spend the next five days pushing a mop or a broom here. It's to fulfill her community service sentence. Campbell, who has a reputation for angry outbursts, was sentenced in January for throwing a cell phone at her maid over a pair of missing jeans. Naomi hit me, and I loved it. So wrong, yet so memorable. This wasn't the last time that Naomi and assault would be used in the same sentence. I mopped the floor, I cleaned walls, in your I high cleaned heels? offices. No, in my boots. Okay. My, my, uh, I had these, I don't know if you saw these workerman boots. Yeah, they were the Azadine Alaya boots, weren't they? And there was Christian Labutan too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always use those for mopping. <laughs> She wrote in a diary for W. Mag about her time doing community service. In June 2000, personal assistant and secretary Vanessa Frisby accuses Campbell of attacking her. The case is dismissed by a British court. Vanessa Frisby, who worked for Campbell for three months, had alleged to publication News of the World that the supermodel had attacked her for talking to the papers about her unconfirmed affair with actor Joseph Phineas. In March 2002, the High Court Master awarded summary judgment in Campbell's favor without a trial, giving Frisbee no chance to defend herself against Naomi's claims that revealing details of her love life amounted to a breach of the confidentiality agreement she had signed. The case then went before a full High Court, which came to the same conclusion. Judge Justice Lightman called Frisbee's discourse, quote, a flagrant and deliberate breach, end quote particularly in the view of the fact that she had intended to profit from the stories. On May 6, 2004, another high court judge ruled in her favor on Naomi's landmark privacy case against the Mirror. She sought damages against the paper for breach of confidence and unlawful invasion after it published a photograph of her leaving a Narcotics Anonymous meeting in February 2001. Sometimes she's wrong, and sometimes she's wronged. Naomi sued the tabloid for invasion of privacy and actually won. Bravo to you. Her next adventure in her headline sweeping anger was on February 21st, 2001, when she allegedly lost her temper when she was refused entry to a members only boutique. The door did not open up fast enough for her, and the staff was subsequently berated by Campbell. In that same month and year, she also scrapped with the photographer outside her boyfriend Flavio Biatori's Chelsea home. Naomi vs. Paparazzi is really its own universe. Ironic that a woman whose presence in front of a lens made her famous, and, you know, she seemingly just detests being in them in any other circumstance outside of a fashion photo shoot or a red carpet event. The lens made her, and it very well may break her. Here is a photo of her fighting a paparazzo in London in 2001. Iconic. In another similar saga to her lawsuit about her leaked picture in front of rehab in February 2001, Campbell was also awarded $5,000 in damages on March 27, 2004 for articles in the British tabloid The Mirror that had exposed her as an addict and went into detail about her treatment. If you know this channel, you know that I explore how addiction and fame are both impossible circumstances to live under, and when they're combined, explosive. She was right to get even. Publicity makes a star. Privacy makes a human being. The lack thereof makes a celebrity. It's really a devil's drug. When did you realize you had a problem? After Johnny died, because 
he died in, after January Versace died, because in 1997, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna touch this because, you know, I've lost Johnny and now I'm not gonna do it anymore. Like, I couldn't keep up with the grief, so I just started replacing it with drugs. However, still, some transgressions are tired and true. In August 2004, a housemaid named Millicent Burton, age 44, accused Naomi of kicking, scratching, and slapping her in Campbell's Park Avenue apartment. September 2004. Former assistant Simone Craig, 30, files assault and battery charges in Manhattan Federal Court alleging Campbell held her hostage in a Los Angeles hotel. The case is later dismissed. Entitlement. That's the word here. Her power in her own world is limitless until it reaches the law. Whether or not the claims had any truth or validity, even with regards to cases' dismissals, it's still very likely that Campbell's track record would suggest that this is just the way her wealth and influence operate. She may not feel it's who she is, but it's what she does, repeatedly at that. We heard so much about Campbell being difficult that we went to Vogue fashion editor Andre Leon Talley to get the truth. Her reputation in the fashion world is that she is fabulous when she's fabulous, and that don't, if Naomi suddenly doesn't show up, you've just got to eat crow and hope that the next time she will show up and be in a better mood. You have a reputation for being notoriously late. Yes. Okay. I now, had to, a reputation. Well, today, <laughs> I like you, and you and I have, have you know, we're, we're getting along just today? fine. An hour and 20 minutes. Oh, dear. Well, I was on another job. Mm, so was I. <laughs> Okay, but well, I apologize okay. profusely. But you are very often late. Is, what's that about? Is that insecurity? Is that a power trip? What is it? It's just a fault and a defect that has to be put right, and I am trying to put it right. It's something that I think is very bad and ill-mannered, and it's not something I'm proud of. But as I said, I am progressing and putting it right. I forgive you then, okay. Thank you very All much. Right. Just don't let it happen again. Okay. Right? <laughs> Let's continue. On September 11, 2004, Campbell discussed her post-substance abuse in an interview with veteran British talk show host Michael Parkinson. Call me a cynic, but that revelation may have been a last-ditch effort at some semblance of responsibility from Naomi or sympathy from the public because her actions still didn't change even after this shocking revelation that basically confirmed several rumors about her past chemical chaos. That very next year, in 2005 of March, Campbell repeatedly beat an assistant with a Blackberry during an argument in Brazil. A spokesperson denies it. A judge, in another case, on March 30, 2006, basically confirms her penchant for phone tossing. Campbell is arraigned on a charge of second-degree assault, this time for allegedly throwing a cell phone at her housekeeper's head. On May 29, 2008, she was charged with assaulting a police officer after a disturbance on a plane at Heathrow. She recounted the experience in an interview. In 2010, she also found herself in the midst of a blood diamond scandal with dictator Charles Taylor. She allegedly received the diamond while staying with Nelson Mandela in South Africa in 1997. She testified in court and delivered one of the most memorable quotes of all time. Well, I didn't really want to be here, so I was made to be here. So obviously I'm just like wanting to get this over with and get on with my life. This is a big inconvenience for me. Diamonds, the dictator, and the supermodel. When ABC News first confronted supermodel Naomi Campbell about a mysterious gift of diamonds, she denied the allegations. But today on the witness stand at the war crimes trial of former Liberian dictator Charles Taylor, Campbell told a very different story. Now she says the dictator's henchman paid her a late night visit, delivering a pouch of uncut, unpolished, precious stones. But were those stones so-called Blood diamonds, the secret currency with which Taylor funded his reign of terror. Brian Ross, investigate. Involving hundreds of thousands of people killed or maimed in a bloody civil war, the Taylor is accused of fueling with what came to be called blood diamonds. As first reported by ABC News, witnesses said Campbell, on a trip to South Africa to the home of Nelson Mandela, had boasted of receiving a packet of diamonds from Taylor's representatives. But Campbell denied the allegations to ABC News earlier this year, before storming out of the interview. You received a diamond from Charles. I did receive a diamond, and I'm not going to speak about that. Thank you very much. 
and I'm not here for that. Well, we've been told that you didn't help the prosecution sort of in this very important case. Sorry. Thank you so much. Sorry. Goodbye. But what she told ABC News was a lie. She did receive diamonds from Taylor. Nowhere near as headline making as what would follow her next. Her past has now become pretty inescapable. Enter Jeffrey Epstein. In 2020, Virginia Jufri claimed that not only was Campbell fully aware of what was going on, but she was also close friends with Ghislaine Maxwell. Campbell has denied this claim. She even sat down in an interview on her YouTube channel to clear her name. Paper does manage to make it clear that you are not aware of Epstein activities. Did you know who he was? Yes, I knew him. He was always front and center at Victoria's Secret shows. Did you suspect what he was doing? No. She'll never just be known as just a troublesome star like others with similar rap sheets. She hasn't ever been just one thing in her public perception that has superseded her supermodel legacy. So each controversy feels like a mini adventure, a chapter in an ongoing tale of a human British Barbie. Whether plastic and placid, or playful and powerful on the catwalk, she's been creating the fashion imagery of designers wildest dreams for nearly four decades now. And so the couture and controversy continues. Subscribe to join the U-Universe.